I'm Camille Davidson. Welcome to my treehouse studio, 15 feet above the ground. Come on up. Okay, this is my setup for working with encaustics. I will put pieces here. These are pieces in process. I have medium right here. Medium is, is wax and damar resin um, melted to a certain temperature and it's like water for watercolors or linseed oil for oil paint. It's, it's, it's clear, it's the beginning of the process, it's what gets mixed with pigment in order to make colors. Yep. Pure beeswax. I melt it. So this is Damar resin from a Damar tree. And once this all melts, and it will melt, <laughs> believe it or not, um, over the course of the day, I will then strain it because the resin has comes from a tree in Africa and actually has has a uh, elephant hair in it. Elephants like to uh -huh. like to scratch their back on this particular tree. And so I have to strain out the elephant hair. I will mix this pigment with encaustic medium and come out with that. And then this I can melt here on this griddle. This is my griddle, my hot plate. Pick it up with a brush. If I heat it up with a torch, my handy torch. In encaustic, if you want it to be flat and you're not building up 3D, you need to heat each layer of the surface because each layer of the wax needs to sink into the next layer of wax. So encaustic is an ancient, ancient medium. It goes back to uh, the ancient Egyptians. It goes back to 300 BCE. Uh, the most famous encaustic pieces are the Metropolitan. They're called the Fayum paintings. A noble family would hire a painter to paint their portrait on bark and then when they died that painting would be cut out and put on their sarcophagus and has lasted until now. They're in the Metropolitan Museum. Artists are now using it in all sorts of ways from 3D pieces to um, large sculptural pieces and 2D, obviously. I found uh, encaustic to be a way that I could work with layers. I'm interested in light, I'm interested in layering and veils, and about 12 years ago, I found encaustic to be the medium of my choice. It, it also smells good when you're working with it. During COVID, um, I became more reactionary. My work became more reactionary to what was going on. The Black Lives Matter movement, the walls we create between people, and I began to find that words started to creep in more and more. And being a Jewish educator, I found that words from my history and from my background began to seep into paintings. The Black Lives Matter is written in English through here and in the background I put a quote from Leviticus that you shall not stand on the blood of your neighbor. For me it, it keeps everything in perspective and so words and ink and uh, pieces of Bible, pieces of Torah, uh, began to creep into work. And I think I want to go with that a little bit more.
This is my gallery in Reedfield. The gallery is a work of love. It's created with the intent to offer artists a gift, the opportunity to show their work, the opportunity to sell their work. I do not take a commission. It, I pay all the bills and it is a gift of love to the community of Reedfield as well as to the community of artists. This specific work is uh, intended to go to a show called Walls that will be held next summer, because it was postponed from this summer, at the Holocaust Human Rights Center. And it is about walls in all sorts of forms. Walls, physical walls, emotional walls, spiritual walls. Uh, I grew up in Israel, by the way. And so my heart, my soul, my homeland is in Israel. This wall here is uh, Shalom in Hebrew, Salam in Arabic. It's white on black, um, black on white. That piece is neither a black or white issue. And this piece is about coexistence. It's in black and white for the same reason that this is in black and white, that it's not a black and white issue. But there's a resistance on the other side. And it's, again, when you tear down the wall, literally, <laughs> that coexistence can happen. It's a time in my life where I can do this and I feel very grateful and very blessed that I can, um, that I can do this at this point. <laughs>